Okay, so now I'm switching to next slide. This is your next slide? Uh, not yet your next slide right now. Yes, now we see it. Okay, it seems some some delay. Okay, yes. but it seems working properly. So uh, as you listening to this uh, presentation online or uh, afterwards, you're probably familiar or at least heard something about Kubernetes. But uh, anyway, I want to highlight a major characteristic of Kubernetes to point out why it uh, caught our uh, attention and why we think it's prospective technology. So uh, getting back to the definition of Kubernetes uh, from Kubernetes website, Kubernetes is open source container orchestration system for automating a computer application deployment, scaling, and management. And uh, if uh, to uh, dissect the definition, uh, for me, it becomes Linux, which we all familiar with, is operating system for single server. And the Kubernetes is operating system for uh, multiple uh, 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 server. And uh, 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 that's uh, why we decided uh, uh, to build uh, uh, our uh, management uh, system, uh, uh, database management system based infra using uh, infrastructure which are available in uh, Kubernetes uh, capabilities. But uh, even if you heard about Kubernetes, operator still may be somewhat a new uh, uh, entity uh, for uh, uh, many of people. And there, I would like to focus a little bit more on what is uh, operator. And the, here again, I shamelessly uh, copy pasted uh, definition from Kubernetes uh, website, which I provide the link to. So I totally disclaimer. It just a uh, copy paste and uh, that's a wall of text, but I tried to highlight the uh, most important parts that operators kind of tries to take knowledge from a human operator and the human operator is uh, uh, the one that uh, 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 has a lot of knowledge how system operates, how to deploy it, how to react to problems, how to handle poor problems how to handle different tasks. Uh, but op what operators is trying to, is trying to mimic typical human operations and put it into automation. That a lot of uh, repeatable uh, tasks can be done by computer or in the best case, uh, best case automatically. So don't don't we all like uh, uh, automatic when computer would uh, handle uh, specific problems or just a, a, a repetitive boring uh, problem for us. And uh, <coughs> that's uh, 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 that is what the goal of uh, operators is in my opinion. And that is where our goal with our uh, Kubernetes operators, we have Percona XDB cluster and Percona MongoDB server operator available that we're trying to automate, automate and de simplify deployments of most uh, 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 typical and uh, 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 simplify life of a, a database administrator. Uh, now, uh, questions uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, hearing quite often, is uh, really Kubernetes ready for uh, databases? And uh, uh, in reality, uh, yes, that's uh, initially, uh, initial releases, initial years of current Kubernetes. It was focused on a stateless application where basically data was disposable and the container was disposable, you could kill container, you could have hundreds of containers, you could kill some of them, they would uh, restart and continue to work seamlessly. But as wonderful as it sounds, it does not work uh, really well with the databases because databases obviously works with data 
And as much as I know, you don't want to kill your data. If anything, you don't you want to preserve uh, your uh, data. And uh, fortunately, yes, uh, Kubernetes still has it, the stigma. It's more suitable for stateless applications. But in the recent years, we see a lot of improvements uh, on uh, uh, data side of uh, 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 problem. Uh, it was entry, uh, Kubernetes introduced stateful sets where for name, obviously transitioned from stateless to be able to handle states then to uh, persistent volumes, then operators were introduced. And the currently interesting feature for me, which I actually have a blog post, will be, which will be published soon, about a snapshot and cloning capabilities of data in uh, Kubernetes. So uh, if anything is getting closer and closer to uh, private uh, cloud uh, capabilities. So yeah, I think uh, at this point of time, Kubernetes is absolutely ready for databases and we see more and more uh, deployments and we continue to develop uh, our operators for databases. And uh, a few words of why, um, why we decided to focus on Kubernetes, why not uh, to use uh, some uh, 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 traditional uh, uh ways of deployment or maybe you know the there is ansible there is terraform where you possibly can um, um uh, uh, write a deployment method by uh, you, you, uh, yourself so uh, there is a, a, a several factors to this uh, 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 in our opinion cloud native application becomes uh, more and more uh, 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 standard de facto and the uh, uh, Sugu in his VTS talk uh, mentioned that Kubernetes is just a uh, uh, very hot uh, topics. And uh, often in our experience, uh, uh, when you run your databases, you might want to run it uh, the same as your application. That uh, and the infrastructure as code also becomes hot, hot topic. And where you just define your uh, infrastructure, but and the same way you might want to define your uh, database uh, setup. And it becomes incre increasingly easier with uh, Kubernetes. Uh, also, uh, we see a lot of companies already moving to handle uh, 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 literally thousands of databases in the, uh, their uh, uh, setup. And uh, a lot of them just accept Kubernetes as a, a standard uh, for this kind of uh, 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 deployment. And uh, of course, uh, uh, portability uh, uh, between uh, different uh, Kubernetes setups uh, uh, make it easier to migrate uh, from uh, one environment to uh, another. So in our opinion, Kubernetes is already at the stage where it, a, where it is able to provide cloud-like experience without uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, lock-ins. And uh, uh, currently our operators, you can run databases on your own Kubernetes on-premise, which uh, uh, is possible, but I know very few uh, people that do that. Uh, and uh, uh, with that, we can run our mm, operators on Amazon uh, EKS, on Google uh, uh, Kubernetes engine, on Azure uh, Kubernetes, uh, um, uh, on uh, uh, Enterprise Ready VMware Tanzu, of course, on OpenShift. But just please don't use uh, uh, 3.x versions. It's just told only if you like. Uh, uh, Antiques, uh, uh, please use OpenShift 4. And uh, pretty much uh, our operators will be uh, able to run on any modern properly configured uh, Kubernetes. And uh, with uh, our operators, we are able to achieve uh, uh, very important uh, 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 characteristics. Uh, we able to provide fully automated deployments. Uh, uh, we can provide a high availability uh, with no single point of uh, uh, failure. And uh, uh, we also can 
achieve uh, automated self-healing uh, uh, logic by uh, recovering uh, from a failure when single database member uh, fails by some reason the cluster will continue to work we provide automated backups and uh, uh, recoveries provide the capabilities for vertical and horizontal scaling we uh, provide uh, uh, automated updates and uh, uh, of course we provide encryption and uh, monitoring which is uh, to be honest not quite there yet where we would like to be but uh, we continue to improve our uh, monitoring uh, 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 solution uh, so uh, when uh, uh, in what cases you might want to choose a kubernetes and our uh, operators when you have multiple uh, uh, deployments of databases created by demands so basically when you would like to provide capability your developers uh, uh, should be able to create a database for their needs even uh, often even without a database, a database administrator involvement and you want to uh, automatically manage that uh, uh, scale of deployments uh, uh, easily so uh, 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 outcome uh, uh, I think is important uh, goal uh, we're trying to achieve that uh, you with Kubernetes and operators you are able to uh, deploy anywhere and uh, to deploy to any other setups you uh, 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 basically not uh, dependent on any specific uh, database as a service installation or any specific cloud with the kubernetes and operators you are able to migrate from an, one environment to another and to be able to automate a lot of your uh, tasks and uh, uh, when uh, uh, it might not be recommended to use the kubernetes uh, when it may be overkill i just want to uh, or point to some of these cases. So when you have uh, very static deployments with a few uh, single uh, couple, few instances of databases, that Kubernetes, frankly, will be uh, overkill and you will spend uh, more time managing Kubernetes than pro possible benefits you will get from this. So yeah, uh, uh, you need to, to decide if uh, the scale of your operations is uh, uh, massive enough to uh, choose a Kubernetes uh, environment. Uh, now, uh, covering the uh, basics uh, of Kubernetes and operators, uh, I, I still would like to present more uh, kind of a generic uh, a slide to maybe uh, give an idea of how operators it uh, works uh, internally that operators basically uses kubernetes api and uh, including internal uh, logic be able to manage uh, uh, database uh, pods and uh, attach storage to perform uh, uh, basic or not so basic uh, uh, the database uh, uh, administration uh, task and now uh, let's move and uh, review to operators uh, we have maybe with more uh, details on uh, uh, and uh, specific uh, uh, about uh, uh, our operators so first one is a uh, uh, percona kubernetes operator for extra db cluster and uh, let's uh, review what the capabilities we provide we support currently both uh, uh, five seven and eight zero versions and extra DB cluster kind of implies we run uh, uh, extra uh, DB cluster b b behind it. And uh, uh, by default, it deployed uh, deploys uh, uh, S3 uh, nodes fully automatically. And the S3 nodes uh, uh, guarantees you no single point of uh, uh, failure. It also is able, we also able to provide automated uh, self healing when uh, a single uh, uh, database uh, uh, crashes by some reason or a pod kubernetes pod is uh, getting uh, rescheduled which happens with kubernetes 
uh, our operator, uh, our database will continue to work and uh, continue to uh, service your mm, mm, uh, queries. We uh, automate uh, backup and uh, 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 recoveries uh, for uh, uh, MySQL database. We also provide automated uh, uh, scaling. We can easily move from uh, uh, downscale to move from uh, uh, default three members to, to increase the amount of uh, nodes or to uh, decrease uh, if uh, we uh, uh, decide so. And um, uh, uh, of course, uh, multiple uh, database members will benefit from having some kind of a proxying logic in front of this that we also deploy a proxy server that we able to uh, route queries to uh, uh, a, a, a primary uh, uh, server which would uh, handle returns writes and also be able to distribute uh, our rights between all uh, available uh, members. Uh, we provide uh, uh, monitoring and one of uh, uh, our recent important features, we provide uh, automatic major uh, versions uh, upgrade. Well, and uh, that's uh, uh, not all of that. Also, uh, data security and data encryption is a very important topic. I cannot imagine a, a database employment or connections without encryption uh, uh, nowadays. So uh, uh, there's features to uh, guarantee encryption as in transit, as in the data at rest. Uh, and uh, mentioning other mm, mm, uh, Kubernetes, more advanced Kubernetes features like uh, uh, budget, uh, node selections, uh, uh, anti-affinity classes. We can uh, uh, use a private Docker registry. Sometimes you want to have a uh, uh, gap uh, deployment without access to Docker uh, uh, images, uh, public Docker images. Uh, 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 we can use either uh, network uh, uh, volume claims or uh, local storage, customize uh, our MySQL configuration. Yeah, I see I'm actually running a little bit of time, so I will now go uh, uh, faster and maybe uh, skip uh, uh, some slides. Uh, so, and uh, just uh, to highlight uh, mm, what is our roadmap. For a roadmap, we look into implement point in time uh, recovery for functions, support automatic uh, 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 for automatic major version upgrades, and also to automate data migration from uh, and to uh, uh, operator from uh, uh, existing database environment. Now let's take a look uh, away how we can deploy uh, Percon operators. Uh, there is uh, several ways. Uh, we have a traditional Kubernetes way uh, using a, a bunch of YAM files where you can define your deployment. Uh, you, we recently provide uh, Helm charts to automate uh, Kubernetes deployments. And also we provide command line tool which uh, uh, greatly simplifies uh, uh, deployments uh, but uh, somewhat is less flexible just, just than just uh, editing uh, YAM files. So uh, if you have your uh, uh, YAM file, you uh, uh, execute kube, uh, uh, ktl create, and eventually you will see uh, this uh, 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 picture, which you can uh, guess a lot of going on here. You see with one command, we deployed three uh, uh, PXC uh, Perconnect 3B cluster nodes running on the different uh, uh, hardware uh, nodes, but also we deployed uh, three uh, uh, proxy uh, uh, servers. So yeah, actually I'm speaking about this on this uh, 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 slide. So yeah, we deployed three nodes and I uh, copy paste uh, uh, relevant parts from YAM files. So we defined the size of cluster three we defined image uh, which we, we want uh, to deploy. Uh, we uh, defined anti-affinity uh, rule that basically we saying that no two pods should be scheduled on the same uh, uh, physical uh, server. That's why we see three nodes deployed on three different uh, uh, servers. And we deployed uh, three uh, proxy servers. 
by default we deploy a ha proxy but also we have uh, other choices proxy sql or uh, or no proxy no proxy uh, at all and uh, also we uh, 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 if we uh, uh, see on the storage we can see that by default we already located three different uh, volumes uh, which we used by our, our, our pods and there is a flexibility on what kind of uh, 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 storage we choose you can choose a, a local uh, storage empty deer host directory or we can uh, uh, use more standard kubernetes persistent volume claims and they decide what kind of storage. In this case, I use a local NVMe uh, 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 storage for uh, uh, deployment. Uh, uh, so uh, what uh, what we have uh, here? We have a Percona XDB cluster, and we know that a pods it's easier because of Kubernetes on because uh, a database uh, still happens in my crash, uh, not my crash by itself. Uh, 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 and using a unique characteristic of per connect DB cluster uh, uh, as a semi-synchronous uh, uh, replication, we uh, uh, guarantee uh, data consistency and the availability at uh, 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 a given point of uh, uh, time. Uh, uh, you can choose a uh, size, uh, instead of three, you can choose a uh, size uh, or one, which basically will make it a uh, uh, deployment as a Percona on a server. Uh, with downside that if uh, uh, there is a pod uh, crash at the schedule, there will be a downtime for your application. And we might look to implement uh, uh, more traditional uh, replication uh, maybe in 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 future as uh, for uh, uh, proxy solutions uh, we by default we deploy ha proxy which uh, in our opinion is most uh, uh, compatible uh, uh, dropback compatible with a minimal uh, overhead and we deploy again the three uh, proxy instances which is uh, which are very lightweight uh, uh, by uh, themselves. And again, this is to provide, uh, 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 this is to avoid um, a, a single point of failure. But if uh, HA proxy is too basic for you, we also provide capabilities to deploy proxy SQL, which would allow you uh, to use more complex uh, uh, query, handling query uh, routing logic. Or if you want to avoid any proxy overhead, it's possible to use no proxy at all. You will get access to per connect DB cluster nodes, but uh, as again pod uh, might get uh, scheduled, your access to that given pod might be uh, disrupted at some point of time. And some uh, more features, uh, again, uh, quite interesting feature uh, which we implemented uh, automatic upgrades the operator will be able to check if a new version available uh, daily and apply a new minor update if needed also automatic uh, schedule backup we can schedule daily uh, uh, or a weekly uh, backup with a retention policy to s3 compatible storage or to a persistent uh, volume and as uh, for uh, encryption we provide both data in transit and it is both uh, between inside the cluster between uh, nodes it's done automatically or we provide capabilities for uh, external uh, connections and if you know uh, uh, connections it's usually done with certificates so we provide different ways how you can uh, configure your uh, certificates either is automatically generated or using your uh, 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 issues and uh, using your uh, policies and the data at rest uh, we provide um, uh, uh, key, key, keys management capabilities in uh, vault uh, uh, with great integration how you can manage your encryption keys and if you don't uh, like uh, uh, yam files uh, we provide the helm charts for your deployment 
uh, which uh, uh, simplifies, greatly simplifies uh, 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 deployment of a cluster or just command line uh, tool, as I mentioned. And the uh, uh, follow the operator is a Percona Kubernetes operator for Percona server for MongoDB. And uh, we support uh, uh, 3.6 for uh, 0 0.0, 4.2 uh, versions. And uh, with uh, a lot of uh, shared characteristics with our ExtraDB cluster operator, automated deployments, encryption, automatic scalings, uh, backups, minor versions update, and uh, self uh, healing. And uh, uh, again, uh, we able to use uh, uh, additional uh, 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 Kubernetes capabilities like uh, private registry storage management, anti-affinity uh, rules, and the custom may customize your configurations. For roadmap, currently I know that MongoDB is all about sharding. We don't support sharding right now, but we're working and it will be uh, done in uh, uh, coming uh, uh, time. Uh, point in time recovery, very important features. And again, we will be looking for major version update. And uh, for a resource about our operators, please use our Kubernetes operators webpage. You can follow me on my Twitter and ask me any questions there because I believe I run out of time now. Thank you, Vadim. It was a very informative talk. Indeed, we've, we've reached the end of the time slot. However, there I have some questions. I will put them in the...